Today, we're going to look at a common vulnerability type seen across the iOS and macOS platforms and a specific kernel bug that was present even in the original iPhone and was exploited in the wild in 2017. These types of bugs are reference counting use after freeze. If you appreciate the research effort that goes into making technical video breakdowns like this, then consider subscribing and liking this video to help the growth of this channel. As a programmer, you're familiar with the concept of allocating and deallocating memory. In a language like C, you call the malloc function to request a block of memory of a chosen size, and the allocator does some magic behind the scenes and then provides you with a nice empty region of memory of that requested size for you to work with. Once you're done using the memory for whichever task, you should free it back to the allocator by calling free. This allows that block to be reused at a later point in the program for something else. Freeing the memory that is no longer in use is of course very important, especially in larger complex programs like the kernel itself, where without freeing any old allocations, you would risk exhausting all the memory capacity available, leaving the system no choice but to terminate. Keeping track of which allocations are actually in use and which ones you can free can actually become quite a difficult task of its own, however. In programs where you have hundreds of functions all operating at once and all making use of shared resources, it can be almost impossible to know if an object should be freed or if something else is currently using it. And here is where reference counting comes into play. To solve this issue, many systems implement reference counting to help keep track of this mess. The idea is very simple. Store an integer field on each allocated object known as the reference count. Whenever some function plans on using this allocated object, it first starts by taking a reference on it. In other words, it increments this counter value by one. And when it's finished using the object, it will release or drop a reference count. In other words, it will decrement the counter value by one. Incrementing and decrementing the reference counter is normally implemented as a pair of functions named something like reference and release. Reference simply has the job of doing the atomic increment on the counter, whereas release has the job of doing the atomic decrement, but then also checking if the counter value has reached zero. If it has, it will call free on the object. Now the programmer doesn't actually have to worry about freeing the objects themselves. As long as they follow the pattern of taking a reference and dropping a reference when they're finished, everything else should work out and objects that are no longer being referenced by anything will naturally be freed back to the allocator. In the iOS and macOS kernels, reference counting is of course used across many subsystems to keep track of allocations in the way that we just discussed. Specifically, let's look at the interprocess communication subsystem. IPC in Apple's code base is built around the concept of muck ports. Muck ports are communication endpoints managed by the kernel that allow processes to send messages to one another or communicate with kernel drivers. They're conceptually quite similar to file descriptors. You can create a muck port in userland through a muck syscall like muck port allocate, and you'll be returned a 32-bit integer value. The raw value itself would be meaningless on its own, but when interpreted by the kernel, it is used as an index into a table of IPC port structures owned by your current process. So when sending a muck message to a muck port, for example, the kernel will take the provided 32-bit index from user space and use it to look up the associated IPC port object in the kernel space to then perform the actual sending logic on that object. The kernel's own representation of a muck port is a large structure with a number of important fields. And one of the first fields we see here is a reference count variable named IO references. This is used to keep track of parts of the code that are currently using this muck port by making use of the reference counting mechanism that we discussed. So when a process first creates a muck port, that port's reference count is set to one. Any other subsequent action that involves the usage of this port will then in turn also increment that reference counter. For example, sending that port in a message to another port will temporarily increase the reference count of the port while it's in transit. Once that task has finished using the port and calls muck port deallocate to get rid of it, that reference count drops to zero and the kernel will free the underlying IPC port object. So with that background knowledge out of the way, let's now introduce a very interesting bug from 2017 assigned CVE 2017-13861. This is a bug in the ref counting logic specifically affecting muck ports and it was actually found to be exploited in the wild to achieve full kernel code execution on iOS 11 devices. The bug itself is in the function iosurface root user client set surface notify. This function is used to register a muck port onto some IO surface kernel object, and it's reachable from most sandbox profiles. Legitimate usage of this function would increase the reference count of a supplied muck port. However, the vulnerability here is that there was an incorrect handling of error cases within this function. 
As described by the project zero explanation, in the case of an error while executing this function, it will actually drop a reference count on the muck port. However, under proper semantics, the kernel code responsible for calling this method is what is meant to be in charge of the reference counting and not this function itself. So on the case of an error and an early return, set surface notify drops a reference on the muck port thinking it's doing the responsible thing, but then the caller also drops a reference. So it plays out like this. A muck port is created by a process A and its ref count is initially set to one. Process A calls set surface notify legitimately to register this port and the ref count goes up to two. Process A then calls set surface notify again, but this time causes an error flow and an early return by trying to register the same port twice. Upon entry to this function, the ref count goes up to three temporarily, and in the error flow of set surface notify, it drops a reference back down to two. We return to the caller where the error is recognized and the ref count is dropped another time down to one. Now the actual references of two is out of sync with the reference counter value of one. At this point, we can call remove surface notify and this will drop another reference legitimately because it is telling the IO surface object to remove that port. And now the reference counter has dropped down to zero and the IO release function in the kernel handling that drop will free the IPC port structure. But of course, we still actually have one real reference to this freed port. The IPC port is still in our task's ITK space and we can still make use of it just as we would with any other muck port. At this point, we've achieved a nice use after free condition on a pretty interesting kernel object. From here, an attacker would typically want to reallocate the memory that was once used for the IPC port object with something new, something that they can leverage to elevate their privileges on the system. Back in the days of 2017, when this bug was actually exploited in the wild, iOS heap manipulation techniques were at their peak. It was pretty trivial to have that memory reallocated for an object of choice or even completely controlled data. For a port use after free like this one, a typical goal for an attacker would be to construct a fake kernel task port in place of the old port. Task ports are basically a special type of muck port, which are used to control an entire task or process. Given a valid task port for a process, you're able to read and write the process memory and control many other aspects of that process. And so in the case of the kernel's task port, you'd be able to read and write kernel memory. In order to build a fake kernel task port, you would need to place some values in memory that resemble the layout of that structure and have it so that that memory directly overlaps with the freed IPC port. Doing this reallocation requires some understanding of the iOS kernel's heap allocator. As we've touched on in other videos on this channel, the iOS kernel divides up its heap into so-called zones. Zones serve allocations for specific object types or sizes, and they each have a number of VM pages to work with for their allocations. Since our freed object is an IPC port, it was allocated within the IPC ports zone. This is slightly annoying since that zone is dedicated specifically to IPC port structures, meaning we can't directly allocate arbitrary data here. However, as a simple workaround, we can trigger a zone garbage collection before performing our heap spray. Zone garbage collections basically scan for any memory page within a given zone that is completely empty, and it will return that VM page back to the page free list ready for use by another zone. This is an important mechanism since otherwise zones could be hogging a bunch of pages that they aren't actually using, putting memory strain on the rest of the system. I was playing around with this vulnerability on a very old iPhone, and back then there actually existed a system function callable from user space that would trigger a kernel zone garbage collection when called. So with that in mind, I performed the following heap shaping strategy. I first ensured that my dangling port would actually be allocated on a VM page full of other legitimate muck ports. Then after freeing the port with the bug, I would also deallocate all of the other muck ports that were on that same memory page. And this would result in having a completely empty page of memory within the IPC port zone that houses our dangling ports address. Now, when we trigger a zone garbage collection with the muck zone force GC function, because that VM page is empty, the kernel will give that page back to the page allocator. Next, we need to spray a large amount of allocations in another zone. I chose to go with the calloc 1024 zone, a pure data zone which I can easily spray by setting arbitrary data objects on an IO surface. I made sure to spray enough allocations such that all of the free slots already within this zone are filled and a zone expansion gets triggered. On expansion, our VM page that was garbage collected before gets assigned to the calloc 1024 zone and subsequent spray allocations will land on that page. And now we're in a position where the old memory used by that dangling IPC port has been reallocated with completely controlled contents and can be used to build powerful exploit primitives. Reference counting issues are a common path to reach a use after free condition, 
And this example was a particularly nice one, as it didn't actually involve any complex timing issues that you might face in race conditions, which are more typical for this bug class. Hopefully you guys learned something cool in this video, and I'll leave all reference links down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.